week it was the Democrats, and this week it's the Republicans' turn to host the national convention, convincing the world that they care about America. Now, compared to the Democrats, it really shouldn't be that tough. I'm Katie Petrick, and this is Healthy Republic. Another week, another convention. But this time, it was the Republicans who put forth some sense and sensibility, while last week was the senile and senseless. We're going to go through the first few days of action, but it's not going to be all unicorns and rainbows because this isn't a pride parade. There were positives to highlight and negatives to critique. And I want to know in the comments your top highlight and your lowest low light from the first two nights. Now, let's get to it. Night one, the RNC hit hard the message that America is a land of opportunity, one that remembers the motto of In God We Trust, and that they are not afraid of invoking God into a speech. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. God bless America, and God bless our president, Donald J. Trump. Thank you, and God bless our country. Now on to the highlights. Finally, after months of thinking the Trump campaign or the RNC was missing an opportunity to hit back on the claptrap about COVID-19 aid to the states, they put together a brilliant ad showing Democratic governors admitting, admitting the Trump administration did its job. He said everything that I could have hoped for. Promise made, promise kept. He is ready, willing, and able to help. He has been responsive. He's done a lot of good things. What the federal government did was a phenomenal accomplishment. In our hour of need, you all literally are helping us in a big way. We were at the edge, and this is life or death stuff, and we're forever thankful for that. Soon, we will emerge safer, stronger, and greater than ever. Just run that over and over and then over some more and run over and over the uplifting messages from everyday Americans who spoke at the convention about how America truly is the land of opportunity. Hard work, dedication, and a little gratitude, not entitlement, will help you fulfill the American dream. In America, I would decide my own future. I am so grateful to America, the place where I was able to build my American dream through hard work and determination. President Trump knows that the American story was written by people just like you and I, who love our country and take risks to build a future for our families and neighbors. I may be a Cuban born, but I am 100% American. This is the greatest country in the world. And I said this before, if I gave away everything that I have today, it would not equal 1% of what I was given when I came to this great country of ours, the gift of freedom. That was Maximo Alvarez, who knows exactly the dangers of embracing socialism and communistic regimes, like the left is embracing now. The Maximos of our country are truly empathetic and it is paid dividends for them because they did not fall to victimhood. It's the same as the next group of people who Joe Biden thinks is monolithic in thought. But perhaps the best speeches of the two nights came from those who are being ridiculed as Uncle Toms by the media and those on the left. Because how dare, how dare a racial minority think for his or herself? It hurt my soul to hear the terrible names that people call Donald. The worst one is racist. I take it as a personal insult that people would think I've had a 37 year friendship with the racist. People who think that don't know what they're talking about. Growing up in the deep south, I've seen racism up close. I know what it is, and it isn't Donald Trump. You know, when I made the public announcement of my support for President Trump, all hell broke loose. I was threatened, called an embarrassment, and asked to resign by my own party. Unfortunately, that's consistent with the Democratic Party and how they view independent thinking black men and women. But I'm here to tell you that black voices are becoming more woke and louder than ever. Whoa, 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 whoa. But you're a Democrat. You can't, you're not allowed to say that. In much of the Democratic Party, it's now fashionable to say that America is racist. 
That is a lie. America is not a racist country. And yet the Democrats still assume that black people will vote for them, no matter how much they let us down and take us for granted. We're sick of it. We're not going to take it anymore. The days of blindly supporting the Democrats are coming to an end. Because despite our differences, we all want the same things. For our children to have more opportunities than we did, to feel the dignity of work, and to believe that if you play by the rules, you can make a good life for yourself and your family. Our family went from cotton to Congress in one lifetime. And that's why I believe the next American century can be better than the last. All of that was great, but we must go on to the bad because the media is always bad. But before we get to them, let's remember that there were no audiences at the convention for the speakers to get any reaction from. It was quickly apparent that Kimberly Guilfoyle forgot that little component. When she was speaking, I just couldn't stop hearing Paulette from Legally Blonde. Biden, Harris, and the rest of the socialists will fundamentally change this nation. They want open borders, closed schools, dangerous amnesty, and will selfishly send your jobs back to China while they get rich. Oh my God, you look like the 4th of July. It makes me want a hot dog real bad. What Gilfoy was saying was actually okay, but then she escalated to a level where only dogs were actually able to hear her, and whatever she was saying was completely lost. Ladies and gentlemen, leaders and fighters for freedom and liberty and the American dream, the best is yet to come. Oh, Could I have been any more god spastic? And then Kimberly's own UPS guy took the stage. Her man friend, Donald Trump Jr., appeals to a lot of Trump supporters. But for those who are on the fence about who to vote for, it wasn't necessarily the best look when Junior got on stage and did a raised voice as well, along with certain Biden name calling. Beijing Biden, Joe Biden is basically the Loch Ness Monster of the swamp. OK, were they funny? Not too shabby, but coming out of a Trump's mouth, it's just fodder for the media and more of a headache than it's worth. Which brings us to the worst of the worst, the media's reaction to all of it. There were no bigger losers between the two nights than the media who could not, would not, never would dare to dream of holding their whines about how mean Big Orange Man is. And they even decided to again attack Nicholas Sandman, the Covington Catholic High School teen from Kentucky who had a face-to-face -face encounter with Native American activist Nathan Phillips near the Lincoln Memorial. Canceled is what's happening to people around this country who refuse to be silenced by the far left. Many are being fired, humiliated, or even threatened. And often, the media is a willing participant. But I would not be canceled. I fought back hard to expose the media for what they did to me, and I won a personal victory. While much more must be done, I look forward to the day that the media returns to providing balanced, responsible, and accountable news coverage. I know President Trump hopes for that too. How dare he attack the media? All they did was decide to pick on a high school boy, ruin his reputation, drag him through the mud, and then spit him out because he wore a MAGA hat. CNN's Joe Lockhart took to Twitter to say he was watching the RNC because it's important. But I don't have to watch this snot-nosed entitled kid from Kentucky. Looks like Joe's undies are in a bunch because Nicholas spoke truth about the media. And the media's wedgie world continued, as one of their biggest gripes was with the pronunciation of Kamala Harris's name. Because you know the media has always, always, 100% of the time, pronounced it correctly. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris, very quickly. Kamala Harris. And Senator Kamala Harris. Senator Kamala Harris. Senator Kamala Harris is Senator Kamala Harris. Senator Kamala Harris. <laughs> If you're having trouble, just say Kama Lama Ding Dong. It helps you know that it is pronounced Kama. As most of you know, I hate myself. So I've been following along with the New York Times live stream conversations between both weeks of the conventions, and I noticed a stark contrast. The number of fact checks they did on night one, just night one of the RNC, outnumbered all four nights during the DNC. 
And then the progressives rally cried to the media to tape delay the RNC because they said the risk of unfiltered disinformation is too great. And the New York Times crew continued their Dear Diary entries by being Karens about masks and social distancing. No one is wearing masks. That's a lot of people not sitting six feet apart. I don't see a lot of masks. Or any. Now, watching this crowd disperse, I am having renewed anxiety about the lack of masking and distancing. For shame! Those gripes were mostly from First Lady Melania Trump's speech, which was held in the Rose Garden with actual people in attendance. And that then takes us to one more highlight before we wrap up the first two days. Melania Trump. The entire second night had a women's power vibe to it, with speeches about empowerment, motherhood, and representation. The number of dedicated, amazing, brilliant, relentless women that are dedicated to the country and to the president and to preserving the American dream is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, things I'll ever be a part of. And Melania provided a nice closing touch, with gratitude about becoming a citizen and meeting the citizens across the nation, especially mothers and children. To mothers and parents everywhere, you are warriors. In my husband, you have a president who will not stop fighting for you and your families. I see how hard he works each day and night, and despite the unprecedented attacks from the media and opposition, he will not give up. But don't ask Bette Midler about being a mother or a lady. She's too busy ripping on the First Lady. Not the speech itself, but the First Lady. Get that illegal alien off the stage. And, oh God, she still can't speak English. And apparently, Bet, you cannot write in proper English. But can you spell xenophobic? The convention is halfway done, and there will be plenty more fireworks and trash talking to highlight. Stay tuned for what I'm sure will be big. It'll be huge. Until next time. Stay healthy, America.